Mama Tuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Yeah, I know how we ended yesterday, and we're going to continue right from there today. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Before we go, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Join your faith with me and say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. Oh, Lord, you are giving it to me. And so I receive all of it. Thank you, sir. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we are not receiving our daily bread because the scripture says so. We are receiving our daily bread because God intended for us to receive our daily bread. And that's why it's in the scripture. So the intent came first. The mind of God came first. The thoughts of God came first before someone captured it and wrote it down. I was telling you yesterday, put your faith in him, not in the book. In him. There's a big difference. Praise God. So I was sharing something with you yesterday, you know, and, and I know we stopped in, in, in a tense situation. So I was telling you how we function with the law, right? And I pray you understand this thing. Because our life is supposed to be a witness we witness, we are witnesses of Jesus. Everywhere we go in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth, we are supposed to carry the lifestyle. We are supposed to be, I am a super day. We are supposed to show the world that Jesus is real. He's real by the life we live. Our lives show it. So I was talking to you yesterday about, now, God's wisdom says it is not good for a man to be alone. That's what God's wisdom says. So when a man makes up his mind and says, I don't want to get married because ah, women are stressful. I would rather be alone. Now you are simply going against the wisdom of God. That's what you're doing. Now what are you supposed to do? You are supposed to allow the wisdom of God to flow freely inside of you. I see. Now, sometimes people wonder, will I have a good marriage? Then the rate of divorce, I see the rate of separation, I see these days. I wonder if I can, huh? will my marriage even survive? It will survive. Why will it survive? See, listen. Mm. I'm not, I'm not, listen, listen. And you must face truth. Because truth is constant. The Lord said this to me some months ago. Sometime last year. He said, now I was talking to someone and I heard this from him. He said, your marriage is either fulfilling God's purpose or it's mocking God. There is no in between. You may just be mocking God with your marriage. Or you are fulfilling his purpose, as in pleasing him. And you can only please God by faith. So from the day you decided to get married, make up your mind not to do it your way. You didn't, you, you are not the creator of marriage. You didn't institutionalize it. You, you didn't think it out. It wasn't your wisdom. It was God's wisdom. If it is God's wisdom, then you must learn to flow with God all the way. See that now? How? Submitting yourself to the Spirit. Now, you remember yesterday I was talking about the law. There are laws that governs every organization there are laws that go everything that has prospered and is established they must be established through laws or by laws you see that now so those laws are there so there is no problem with the law god has no problem with the law the problem you know now i was telling you something yesterday so now you have this pastor was a general overseer, the head of the ministry. And he set these laws and he said, look, um, for example, when we, when, when, when we are having a program, right? Every staff 
must be at the program. You can take permission to travel during the program. Okay. Now, let's say the pastor's son or daughter becomes grown and they're now working in the ministry while they're in school. You know, part time they work in the ministry while they're in school. And so there's a program that's been set. And while after that program has been set, an exam or a test is set in school the same day of the program. Well, the child now say, oh, I'm not going to write that test because there's a law that says everybody that is a staff, and now I'm a staff of daddy's ministry. So I can't miss the program. I have to go and write the test. Now, you, the right thing to do, I want you to listen to me. The right thing to do is to go now, whether it's a child or a normal staff, is to go to the head and say, sir, the program is holding on social day and I have an exam to write on that day. The right thing to do is you'll be excused. Oh, go write your exam. Go write your test. Now, are you breaking the law? You see, the fact that you recognize that, oh, I'm supposed to be there, but then I have to face this thing now. Are you getting what I'm saying? You recognize, you understand the vision, and you'll be excused. But you see, the people, now this is where I'm going to, there are people who are set as administrators of that law in that organization. Because their hearts are evil, they, oh, I have an, no, you can't, you, you, you can't, you don't even try it. Don't even try. You must decide today which one comes, the kingdom of God or your exam. You must decide today. Now you see, the law was not the problem. The problem was with the administrators of the law. Are you getting me? So that law was set up for organizational purpose. To let people know how they should flow. It doesn't mean that the law has become God over them. No. It's the same thing that God did. So Jesus will look at this woman caught in the act of adultery and say, neither do I condemn you. Now, the law condemns her. But Jesus says to her, neither do I condemn you. Why did Jesus break the law? No. Because he understood beyond the law. He understood this woman. He understood her intent. He saw what happened behind the scene. And based on that, he chose whether to condemn or not condemn. But then someone who is limited by the law, that's all he sees is just sees the law, will condemn her. Now, here's the point. I told you yesterday, there is a spirit that works. There is a spirit that works in every organization. The same way there's a spirit that works in Christ. Even in Christ, there are laws. <laughs> there are laws. No one, there is no one who works in Christ or who works with Christ that won't get to that place where, where he is functioning by laws. Every teaching the Holy Spirit gives to you. <laughs> mm. So that's why I said yesterday, you know when you say we're ministers of grace, we're not ministers of the law. Be careful that you're not trapped in your own message. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You see, for example, if the Lord begins to teach you on finances, and you are prospering in His teachings, you're understanding it, and then you begin to practice the things He's taught you, you will realize that there are patterns that will be established in your life. Are you following me? You, you will know. I mean, this is you now, not, not put, no, now, as in, this is you and the Holy Spirit now, walking. 
He's teaching you concerning finances. He's teaching you concerning... Now, he will begin to establish patterns in your life. There are patterns the Lord have established in my life. There are patterns the Lord have established in our families. I was talking to my children uh, recently, you know, and I began to explain certain things to them that we do as a family. Why was I explaining it to them? Now, they are little, but I know they will grow to have their own families. So I'm beginning to teach them now, this is why we do what we do as a family. This is why we do this particular thing. This is the command that came from the Lord consigning this. And we, as long as we keep it and follow it, we will do well. Why am I sinking it in them? When they grow, now it, it becomes a culture in them. When they grow, in their families they, because God is not going to change the pattern he might bring them to a newer level of it but the pattern will be the same neither am I imposing it you must follow this pattern but rather we are teaching them as a culture we're practicing it so they see us practice it and they are involved in practicing it then, then it becomes in their in, embedded in them but you see it's our duty to let them know the vision the 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 word that came consigning it because that's what drives it now wherever they go the spirit of god that gave us that instruction will meet them so that's why you find abraham as a man of tithes right and then you find jacob who is the third son, the, the, the third generation of Abraham? You find him making a commitment to tithe. He must have learned something about tithing. He must have experienced the culture of his fathers concerning tithe. So when he met the first time he met the Lord, he was quick to make a commitment to tithe. The angel did not tell him tithe. But he was smart enough to know because he has heard of his father. He has heard of his grandpa and what tithing meant. So you know some people say, Abraham only tithed once. How foolish to think that way. What you did only once, your grandson is committed. Just think. It was a culture. It was a culture. How do you know it was a culture? That's why God taught them in the law. To make it a culture. Thank you, Holy Spirit. May the Lord give you understanding. So this is how life is. You start up a thing. Then God begins to give you patterns. And those patterns will translate to laws. Now, your job is to make sure the vision is not lost. Because when the vision is lost and all you have is laws, then you begin to find people that are entering into bondage by those laws because they don't understand the vision. Meanwhile, the vision can sieve the mixed multitude out of the whole thing. Are you getting what I'm telling you? I am a gosh, I am. So this is why I tell you, we don't try to conform to the scriptures. There is a spirit that is at work in us. As the spirit is at work in us, we realize that our lives are conforming to the scriptures. Not that we struggle. Hey, I failed to be chai. Oh, this thing is hard. This Christianity is hard though. No, sir. We glide in the spirit. Elemoko sabrida. We walk by the Spirit. We, we flow with the Spirit. Remember I said we walk by faith and not by sight. What does that mean? The voice of God is coming to us all the time, consigning everything. And as we walk by that voice, we walk by that voice. He's producing love in us, praise God. And you, know, you remember what he said, against such there is no law. Why? Why? Because I've caught the vision the same way Abraham caught it. I've caught the vision the same way Moses saw it. Moses didn't see laws. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not. No, no, that's not what Moses saw. He saw the visions of God. They came alaba. And that's what he was walking by. So Moses is not going to say, hey, 
I would have stolen this thing. If not, if not, that God said we should not steal. Chai. Oh, God save. No. He saw a God who provides everything. There is no need to steal. And that's what the Holy Spirit does to us. Why don't we steal? Because God is able to make all grace abound towards me. That I, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. He's able to make all grace abound towards me. He is able. So I assess that grace in here. Why would I steal then? So I keep trusting him, walking, receiving his grace, demonstrating. And, and guess what? Someone looks at me. I said, you don't steal. I said, no, I don't. So you see, you shall not steal. You shall. It's a prophecy. You shall not steal. So we don't steal. You shall not commit this. You don't do it. You shall not. You don't do it. You shall not. Do it. You don't do it. Why? Not because you're saying, oh God, I put it again. Help me. No. The Spirit is walking in you. The Spirit is walking in you. And then you just realize your life is going forward and forward and forward and forward. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's how it works. Submit yourself to the workings of the Holy Spirit. Submit yourself to Him. What do you need? Everything He has said. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Praise God. Now, Notice he said, I shall not want. He is not saying, when I'm in want, I'll start, oh God, you, I say, oh Father, I receive. No, he said, I shall not want. It is a command and a prophecy. He used the word shall. You shall not want. Praise God. How does it work? Father, the Lord is my shepherd. And I declare in the name of Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. I say, Lord, you know I'm not supposed to want. Because you said I shall not want. So as I get to the end of that place, where I'll need that thing, I'll see the supply. How would you see the supply? The work is of the Holy Spirit in you. So you wake up and you're on that journey going, and then he's the one that'll tell you, stop. Okay, I've stopped. He said, look right. Okay. Pick up that thing. Oh, thank you, sir. Pick it up. And you get to that place. Oh, we have we have what it takes to foot the bill. You know, that, that's how it works. So now you realize that, oh, every time I need something, it just shows up. How is it showing up? Because there is a spirit that is at work in us. And that spirit sees to it that we do not want. Because, see, God has said we shall not want. That's how it works. That's how it works. Everything you need in this life, God, Hayana Makasaya, Ela Kroto Bakusapekli Itaparatia, Brekumni Saparakataya, wherever you are now, just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And I'm trusting the power of the Holy Spirit to quicken you right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Elaidu Koso Prakata Labaria. In the brand new kono saleke baria zege da pruni no krote erkia baya tor ai kobariani. Whatever you need right now, <laughs> if you need healing in your body right now, as you pray the Holy Ghost, get up and begin to do what you couldn't do before, because the power of the Holy Spirit is working in you right now. I'm telling you right now. E kanebo sakela raba. If you couldn't walk, get up and begin to walk right now. If there was anything wrong in your body, get up right now and begin to do what you couldn't do. There is a power that is at work bringing to pass everything God has said in your life, making you a witness of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Don't stop praying in the Holy Ghost. Don't stop praying in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost because the power of God is being generated inside of you right now. Not just inside of you. He is walking through your whole being. Hallelujah. That thing you are expecting is coming to you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hey, I want to hear your testimony today. Praise God. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.